So today we're doing a thing. We're cutting the nose off the Corvair. Good morning, Auto Anatomy family. Today we're back working on the Corvair, and on the last video you saw that we replaced the, uh, the front corner and had a little bit more rust repair to do because unfortunately this whole section here has been bashed in and while I think it can probably be fixed, I think it's probably just better to go ahead and replace this whole nose because it's pretty lacy through here. Um, as you can see down in here, this is all rusted out. And it's just, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to this. Can it be saved? Absolutely. But uh, if we can find an entire nose piece, I think that would be um, just a whole lot easier to, uh, to knock out at once. Plus, we've got this hole that needs some, some love. We've got wheel arches that need to be replaced on both sides. And today we're knocking out all of the rust on the front end, except for that little spot there. So I've got a ton of work to do. Mostly I just want to get this thing back on the road and enjoy driving it. The weather's starting to get a little bit cooler here in South Carolina and there's some little mountain roads that I want to go blast up and down. So I think the best place to start is actually going ahead and doing this corner down here. Um, rather than cutting out the front section, if I put this corner in place, if I replace this corner, I at least know that I've got like a solid reference across the front. Whereas if I did this, you know, I could go ahead and cut all of this off. This might get slightly off just in the course of, of fitting things, which is just going to exacerbate any gaps and problems by the time it gets over here. So I think as long as I've got a solid reference here with the, the nose piece, it makes the most sense to do this piece first, and then once the corners are solid, then do the, uh, do the nose piece. And we've got a top secret Corvair only yard that we're going to be going to to cut out some new uh, wheel arches and a new front nose for the car. Let's get started. So in the process of getting this all cut and fitted, I noticed this is not fit very well even from the factory. There was a, a bunch of, of mud that was put in here, or like factory seam sealer. And there's like, I don't know, 3 16 of an inch of a step off between the original nose piece and the original corner. This has not been wrecked and this has not been altered. So when you look on the inside here, this is all original right here. It was just... It was just not put together very well. Um, yeah, you can even see this is like the original um, tack weld where they they joined the uh, the outer skin with the nose piece. So, yeah, hopefully this will be a little bit better put together now than it uh, than it was when it was new. All right, now that I got the corner all welded up and, and mostly metal worked in, um, I've got a little bit more work that needs to go on the back sides, kind of where the, um, the corners meet the arches, and that's because we're gonna be replacing the wheel arches. So that's on hold to finish that until I get the, the new arches. Let's head over to a, a top secret um, Corvair only place. I'm only gonna show you just a little bit of video um, out of respect for the owner. My plan is to get new wheel arches for the driver and passenger side and hopefully see if I can find a new nose here. We can just chop you know, the whole section out 
and then that way you can just replace this as one big unit. All right, let's gather up some tools and head on out. Look at this line right here. <laughs> oh, you were just like an inch or two away. <laughs> and I also came down really good yeah. in between these two. You want yeah. to go in between those? No, that's fine. I mean, right there is fine. Yeah. Either whatever is easy, man. So we're back from uh, the Corvair place and you can see I got some wheel arches that even happen to be the right color so I think that's pretty cool. Um, I went ahead and picked up a couple of new headlight buckets because you know all of the bolts and everything were were rusted out and I could probably you know drill these out and tap them but he had a couple of, of perfect buckets sitting there. And then we got a nose section off of one. It's got some some damage here that uh, that needs to get worked on um, but this would be a really good start but then I got a, a call from a buddy of mine that had an entire nose section that is all the way complete I mean it's got you know some tiny little dents and things like that in it but nothing major it is from a 66 to 69 so I'm gonna fill you know these three little spots here but this is absolutely complete so I think I'm going to use this nose um, rather than the, the yellow nose just because it's a little bit more complete. And I think the first thing to do is, oh gosh, um, I need to get the structural supports out of this one. So this bottom half is two, two panel six. So there's this inner skin and then there's the outer skin of the body itself. Um, there's like a bazillion spot welds all the way down here and then there's the structure for the hood um, latch and then the frame horns all of that so all of that has to come out um, in order to get this panel off so that I can now put it onto this which means all of these spot welds have to come off so I've got a lot of work to do to try and get this uh, front end ready to slide the new piece on. So I'm actually sitting here wondering, like, since I don't care about this outer skin and I don't care about the inner skin on the new piece, why can't I just figure out where, like, the, uh, the braces line up and then cut this out and then just grind this down rather than having to drill out all of those spot welds and then I can do the same thing, but on the inside of the, uh, the new panel. So I preserve the structure from this panel and the skin from the new panel. That feels like that'd be a whole lot easier than trying to drill out, you know, 200 spot welds. Huh. Let me think on that a little bit. So I've decided that I am going to go ahead and just cut this out. And I kind of roughly marked, like... This section, this section here is going to be like where the frame horns are. So I'm just going to cut around that and then cut out this entire piece down here in one, one fail swoop and then cut the, from here all the way to the, the factory body seam on this side. 
And then on the inside here, the um, the hood uh, latch mount is spot welded. This is two pieces, and it looks like there are just spot welds here um, along the way. Looking at the the new piece, you can see it's just got four spot welds. So I think as long as I just drill these spot welds off, this part can stay with the new piece, and then this part will stay with the old structure that I don't care about. So that way I don't have to try and drill out these spot welds and line everything up. Provided that I get these welds drilled out, these two pieces should line up and keep everything in reference. So let's get out the, uh, the death wheel and start cutting out the front bumper. So I've got pretty much the entire nose off. I still have to do a little bit of work up here on this corner, but I wanna show you all this. This is so cool. You can still see an original like printing on the, uh, the metal structure here. It's AR and then something, and there's a big V and it says zinc. I can't tell what the rest is. 34656-1C0. That's pretty cool. After, you know, 60 years of being covered up, you can still read the original stamping on it. All right, I've got a little bit more dolly work to do on this and then um, just grinding it up, making sure it's nice and smooth. Then we'll get to work on cutting out all of the support structure on that one. All right, now that I got the original nose cut off, it's time to start working on the new front piece for it. Um, coming over to the little stand here, you can see we've got a lot of work to do because this still has some rust. It's not perfect here. But I think the first thing to do is gonna be cutting out all of the original support structure. 
Now on the old nose, we cut off the skin, leaving the support structure in place. On this piece, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna cut out the structure and leave the skin in place. So this is gonna be a tricky operation and I'm not 100% sure that I'm gonna do it, um, or at least be able to do it, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Worst case scenario, I do have another lower piece that I got brand new from Clark's. So worst case, we cut right along the seam and it ends up with just a tiny little bit of uh, a filler right along the bottom edge. So either way, we've got options. I think I'd like to try and use the one piece if I can. I think it'll look better in the long run, but uh, no way to tell until we start cutting it out. So let's get started. After about an hour and a half of grinding um, you can see I am just barely you know into to getting this cut out I think I'm probably going to end up just using the uh, the bottom half of the uh, the new piece that I got from Clark's and splicing it together with this so basically cutting it across here and then splicing it back together with the other new piece um, I would have loved to have used you know one piece just for for continuity I just think it's going to be way too much work. So let me get on to, uh, to fitting the, the new piece onto the car, um, and then we can figure out where we need to cut and get started cutting up this brand new nose. So I picked up an entire uh, new nose from Clark's Corvair um, before I realized that the, uh, the center section, you know, that was right here was all bondoed up um, because we just had that one section on the bottom, and I thought, okay, this would be the best way to do it. Uh, once I had gotten that nose um, from my buddy, I thought I would just return this, but it looks like I am going to end up keeping it and using it. And now I just have to go on and start fitting this thing. Um, historically, aftermarket body panels tend to not line up very well um, compared with OEM, so I'd rather use original stuff if we can, but unfortunately, I think I would just end up destroying that new nose trying to get all the support structure out. So we're gonna go with it this way. Um, let's hang this thing on and see just kind of how it fits and you know where we need to tweak and modify and, and hopefully we don't have to do any of that, but I'm doubtful. So let me show you what I'm seeing here. On the inside, things look like they're lining up pretty well. Um, this is matching the curvature of the original support structure. On driver's side, looks pretty good. Still a little proud, about a quarter inch. I think there's some like a uh, little massaging of things that needs to, to happen. Coming down on the bottom, yeah, we've got maybe an eighth of an inch gap. That, that just needs to be clamped down, and I think that will line up pretty well. What I'm seeing so far is that just like on the original, 
there's a pretty big step off right here between the passenger side and the uh, the nose. So I can probably massage that back into uh, into alignment because it's pretty good everywhere else. It's just that one spot. Let me know if you've got a late model and yours does that as well or if mine's just tweaked. Um, let me play with this a little bit more, but overall I'm pretty happy so far with the way this is fitting. Bolt holes are lining up really well. Okay, let me keep working at it and see if I can get this thing to fit even better. And then we can go ahead and tack this thing in. So I've masked off the areas where I'm gonna put on some, some weld through primer on where the new metal is gonna to weld onto, it, onto the, the body. And I covered up the, uh, the zinc grip and the ink stamp there because I like it and I like knowing that it's there. And who knows, maybe in 50 or 100 years or whatever, if this car is still around and needs some front end rust repair done, someone else will get to discover um, what I did. So let me get some weld through primer on the, uh, the bare metal there, and then we can punch some holes for our spot welds, and then finally hang the, uh, the new nose on and get it welded in place. All right, so it's the next day and just wanted to clean up some of the paint on the original uh, or on the uh, the new nose we're going to be putting on grinding away some of this and lo and behold what do i find even more bondo and a little rust but this is crazy i mean like i feel like every corvair nose has is dented up and full of bondo like am i wrong like is this was this a common thing, you know, back in the day to just ram your car into uh, into something and just fill it up with Bondo, or is this factory? Um, I have no idea, but it's coming out. So it started off as a relatively minor job of just stripping the paint off, just that I could mark, you know, where the, the cut line's gonna be, has turned into yet again more body work. Um, I shouldn't be surprised anymore. <laughs> All right, let me finish getting the paint off and we'll just see what we're working with. So I feel like the theme of this build is doing things that I really didn't want to do. Um, on the hood latch mount, I really wanted to kind of keep that attached to the nose, but unfortunately I think I'm going to have to cut it off in order to get to the panel to knock out some of these dents. I wish I had just not even started at this point. I was driving the car and enjoying it. <laughs> It's all right, it's almost done. It's almost done, I'm not giving up. All right, let me get this cut off and we'll start banging this panel out.
All right, so I got the, the nose pretty much knocked out. Um, it is, well, at least the dent knocked out. Um, there's still a little bit of metal finishing that needs to happen like right through here. It's just slightly proud. I can feel it um, just a little bit with my hand. Also filled in a couple little pinholes up here, um, nothing major. And I've got it clamped in place and it's good to see it actually started to look like a car again. The next steps, I need to put the headlight buckets in, make sure that all lines up right. And actually, I guess before that, so you can see on the upper piece where it meets the lower, I need to scribe a line like across here and then come down just less than whatever this distance is so that the upper piece will sit into this little step off um, on the lower piece. So that when it welds in place, the outside is gonna be flush. So let me mark that off. Once I get that cut, then we can put the, uh, the headlight buckets in, um, mock this guy up in place, get it tacked in, and make sure the, the hood lines up, and then I think we'll be done with the nose. Well, this turned into way bigger of a project than I ever really expected. When I look back, you know, just a couple of uh, videos ago and we were gonna just change out the trunk floor, little did I ever think that we were gonna be at a spot where we were cutting off, you know, the nose, the, the corners of the fenders, um, you know, all of this stuff. But the upside is it's mostly done. I've got the, uh, the nose on. I am very happy with the way it looks. Everything fits really well. My gaps look good. Still have a little adjustment on the hood to do over here, but you know, that's a, a little thing. Got some grinding still that I need to work on, but overall I am ecstatic with the way that that turned out. This seems like a natural spot to go ahead and end this video. I still have a lot more rust repair that needs to happen. Um, I've got the, the wheel arches that need to get done. There's the, the back corners of the fenders. I may wait on those a little bit. These need to get done sooner rather than later, um, just because I don't want to have to cut on the, the body with you know putting the fuel tank back in and any of that stuff. And I want to have all of the, the rust repair done on the front end before I, I coat the, the inside of the trunk. There's still a couple of little areas that need to get fixed, you know, just a little little corner here, and there's one on this side, but you know, those are relatively minor little things that need to get done. Got some more grinding that I need to do, you know, a little metal finishing, but overall I could not be happier with the way that this turned out. So I think that's going to wrap up this video. If you like seeing Corvairs and other cars get brought back to life, think about hitting that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. It's a free way to help support our channel. Thank you so much for watching. On the next video, I'm not sure yet. I can't decide if I want to do suspension just to have a break from rust repair or if I want to go ahead and just knock it all out. Let me know in the comments below what you would do. Take care of yourselves. God bless. We'll see you next time.